Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got another X231 video for you today. We're gonna work on the radiator core and the radiator top. Now that is, that MM on there, nice and classy. Um, this is actually a production radiator top off of a ZB. We'll come around to the other side, get a look at the number. We have some stuff over here. We have a 10A2408, so for once, this is not an irreplaceable one-of-a-kind casting and that's a good thing because we're going to be taking all of these bolts out trying to separate this core from this top. Now when we did the steering bolster, when we detached the core at the base here from that bolster, almost every one of these bolts broke off. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen up here or not, but we're outside today. It's been raining, ground is plenty wet, so in case we need to get the torch out and some open flame, we shouldn't have to worry about lighting anything on fire. <laughs> As I was carrying it out, this fell off, and this happens to be the rest of the overflow tube that comes down from the top. You can see that thing was pretty well plugged anyway, so that's gonna be something that's gonna have to be replaced easy enough. Looks like they just have like a compression seal right here off this elbow. We have the inlet to the radiator right here. That's where the hot coolant would come from the engine feed into the top tank. So anyway, we're gonna get to working on this. Um, we're going to see if we have to uh, get this down to the radiator shop, and I'm guessing we will. So I'm seeing a lot of cracked solder around those tubes on this bottom header plate. So we'll get it up to them and see what they think. But first we need to make sure we can make all these pieces come apart. So Senior's going to start working it over. It's like some rusty stuff in there, huh? A few acorns, stuff like that, looks like. A little bit of a the... nest? Yeah, I can't pick up with the camera. Uh, must have come in through the see. Yeah, it came in through that opening over here. See if we can dig some of this stuff out. Oh yeah, there's some insulation. Yep, there's some acorn holes. It's nasty in there. Something's been living. Probably easiest just to get that top tank out without having to fish all that stuff through the uh, opening, then, right? Mm -hmm. Feel like it's moving or just twisting? That's moving. I like to tap. Sometimes tapping just to shock will loosen them better than just trying to reef on them. Kind of a manual version of an impact. Yep. I hate to use an impact this close to the core. You could start mashing fins. Actually, this core doesn't look that bad either. I mean, it's got a couple little, you know, dings right there, but nothing that goes into the tubes or anything. Which is surprising. I would have figured on this tractor that the fan would have tried chewing its way halfway through it at some point. Tapping seems to be working better than just force. Uh-oh, there's one. First one that broke. Well, we're going to lose a few, I have a feeling. Quite a few, I got a feeling. Try some strategic heating up on the side of the casting. We don't want to get too much heat around that header plate melt any more solder out than might already be compromised. But it's a little easier to take heat to a, uh, a easy to find production cast iron piece. It's a lot easier to do that than something that's got a 10X on it. I'm always afraid of breaking. Still sounds fairly solid. Well, I do dare do much more heat around this radiator. Yeah. It's going to transfer and it's going to keep getting warmer all the time. I'm betting we're going to twist that one off too. Yep, there it went. Yeah, I got a feeling they're all going to be twisted. Well, it is what it is. Been through this process before. Think that one's turning? Yeah. Let's try to steady it for you. Yep. But that one's turning out. It's looking good. I'll let this side cool and go to the other side.
by IC threads. Look at that, first success. <laughs> That's one we don't have to drill. Well, so far, front side here, we've been doing pretty good. You got every one of them out that you've tried so far, right? Four so far. Four out. So, okay, with the two there, these two are basically out. We don't have to worry about those anymore. Let's see if we can loosen some more here. Get the other side, we'll stabilize. Using the old cheap wrench to hammer on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What we've been doing on this front side and so far they've all been turning out every one that turns out is a victory because you don't have to try and extract it later it seems like it's going pretty good oh yeah that one's good yeah i can see it's a good solid thread out so far that one's really easy That one will go. Three more down there. Kind of liking this front side. There, that was the last one on this side. I see they got a flat washer under these corner ones that bridge the gap between these pieces of strap. They put these pieces of strap under all those bolts so that it helps to exert better pressure on that uh, that header plate all the way across, keeps even tension on the gasket, reduces leaks. That one actually is not in that bad shape. The ones that came off the bottom down here were so badly pitted they were just about rotted through in a couple spots. <laughs> Got all that stuff. Yeah, had to get a lot of time to dry. A lot of stuff coming out of the core. Authentic farm dust, 100% original from back in the day. Working on the last one, and I think this is probably going to snap too. We've abandoned our heating method because we don't like soaking that much heat into that core. So I'm just working this one. I have a feeling though. We're going to twist it off. Yep, there it went. Twist it off. Oh boy. That thing is full. That's what the core looks like on the top. All kinds of nasty. Let's tally up how many broke off. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six one broken off, which is a lot better than what the bottom tank was. I think, what did we get? Maybe two out of that one? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Well, we got fourteen victories on there anyway, but wow. They were in there for a while. That is some bad stuff. Just scratching some of the debris from around those tubes on top of the radiator. Got most of the top tank cleaned out, and that's the pile that we ended up with. All of that stuff was up inside this radiator. Oh, the joys. Final step now is to get this inlet off of the top tank. Fortunately, these bolts aren't putting up much of a fight. They're coming out rather easily. Stick in a little bit, but it's out. Lock washers broken under that one, pretty common. Lots of rust too, where the threads weren't engaged. Almost looks like there might, maybe should be a, a thermostat in there, hard to say. Pretty common to see anything that had been in there removed anyhow. Looks like we have some sort of a retainer in there yet. So with the disassembly finished, I've laid out all of the main pieces of X231's radiator system along with that front bolster which makes up the bottom tank. Uh, and this is kind of a hybrid between an earlier model ZB radiator and an eventual production 445. It has a production ZB top 
and it has grill screens, which are very much like a ZB. Now a ZB tractor would have had 17 of these slat openings in the grill pieces, but X231 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So with 19 openings, I'm saying that this core is a little bit bigger than what was in an earlier model ZB tractor. So even though we retain the production top, we have a little bit bigger core and taller grill screens to match. Now to wrap things up, the last little bit of prep that we need to do is to get those remaining broken off bolts out of this top tank, and then we will be able to drop the core off at the radiator shop when the timing is right. Um, and if they do repairs on the core, they've already told us that they wanna have the top tank and the bottom tank, and probably these side supports here to uh, assemble this whole thing and do a final pressure check. Even though the assembly will not be permanent at that time, they need to be able to do that to verify their own work. So that's kind of why we got into this radiator today. That and the fact that, well, for two reasons, we've got that bolster repaired, the casting repair done on it. So since that bolster, like I said, is the radiator bottom tank, um, we need to start thinking about the core, the top tank, and the sides and everything. It's all connected, it's all part of the system. Uh, the other reason we got into that today is we still had weather conducive to do so. Um, anytime we use torches open flame, we like to be outside. I hate bringing that stuff into the shop just for the fire hazard aspect. So, um, and it's fall, as you guys know, if you've been following along with the channel, I've been saying we're getting all of our outdoor projects done while we still can, because later this winter when it's cold and snowing and blowing and dark all the time, we can finish taking those broken off bolts off in the shop where it's nice and warm. Basically, it's just getting all of our ducks in a row, getting all of our preps done and in place so that when it's time to get that stuff to the radiator shop, everything is set and ready to go. So that wraps up another installment of the X231 Restoration Series. As always, everyone, I thank you for watching and I hope to see you back again.